of the game is Banana Ball, and this is the fastest, most entertaining game in sports. Rule number one, win the inning, win the point. In Banana Ball, points are the most important. If you score the most runs in an inning, you get a point. The most points win the game. But in the last inning of Banana Ball, every run counts as a point. Rule number two, there is a two hour time limit. No new inning can start when the clock hits zero. Rule number three, no stepping out. If you step out of the batter's box, it is a strike. Rule number four, no bunting, because bunting sucks. If you bunt, you're thrown out of the game. Rule number five, batters can steal first. On any pass ball, wild pitch, or any pitch, a batter can take off and try to get first. Rule number six, no walks allowed. Walks are boring. So in banana ball, it becomes a ball for a sprint. And the batter will take off and advance to as many bases as he wants until every position player touches the ball. Rule number seven, no mound visits. Nope, stay in the dugout or stay in your position. Let's play ball. Rule number eight, if a fan catches a foul ball, it is an out. You got that right. In banana ball, everything's in play, so you better be ready. Rule number nine, the showdown tiebreaker. If the game is tied at the end of nine innings or when time expires, we don't just play extra innings in banana ball. It goes down to an ultimate duel, which we call the showdown. It is pitcher versus hitter with one fielder, and the hitter has to score. If both teams tie the first showdown, then it goes down to just pitcher versus hitter with no fielder. And finally, if we're still tied after two showdowns, the third showdown is pitcher versus hitter, one fielder, and base is loaded, and all the runs count as a point. Rule number 10, the banana ball challenge rule. Not only does each team have the opportunity to challenge a ruling on the field, but for the first time in sports history, you, the fans, have the opportunity to challenge a ruling on the field. Rule number 11, the golden batter rule. Now for the first time ever, a team can send up any batter to hit in any spot in the lineup. This is guaranteeing the best possible matchup, the best pitcher versus the best hitter at the end of the game when it matters most. These are the official rules of Banana Ball. It's game seven of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our fiercest of friends over at Zappos. The party animals lead the season series four games to two as we have our first contest Back in the hostess city of the South, our home Grayson Stadium here in Savannah, Georgia. The Bananas defensive alignment here in Grayson. Left to right in the outfield, Robert Anthony Cruz, D.R. Meadows, and Danny Hosley. Third to first in the infield gives you Gabe Howell, Ryan Cox, Jackson Olsen, and Eric Jones Jr. Behind the dish is Bill Leroy, and towing the slab, it's Ryan Kellogg. Yeah, we continue to see this rotation between Danny Hosley and Reese Alexiotis in right field tonight. It's the returning banana, Hosley getting that start. How about this, Rack making his home debut and getting the start in left field and still looking for that first trick play, mind you, would be really cool to see that tonight. But of course, the eyes are on Ryan Cox. Can he catch or surpass Dustin Baber tonight in that trick play department? We will see as he's got a great man on the mound to help him do that. Also looking for his first career trick play, Ryan Kellogg, the six foot seven southpaw out of Whitby. Ontario up in Canada. You look at his numbers from a tour ago. Guy who spent seven years in the Chicago Cubs minor league system, got up to AAA in Des Moines. He has been unbelievable in banana ball. Yeah, last season opponents batted 264 against the lefty. Of course, this season debut for Kellogg. Four innings pitched, five hits allowed, only one earned run. Didn't allow a single sprint, which is classic Ryan Kellogg, and five strikeouts to boot. Three minutes and 22 seconds, the average MPI. And by the way, in his home starts in 2023 here in Grayson Stadium, he had two of them. His average MPI, three minutes and 25 seconds. Just a slight difference there. Let's feast our peepers on the party animals lineup. The first six, Mike Vivasis is pretty much just writing in pen each and every night. How about Nick Keldy? <laughs> that guy's looking great down there. Getting me off topic here. Hampton Cornett's goal, all due to swing it here in the first. Fisher cleaning it up. Then Thomas Acuff, Delano, 
Porter, Swan, and Baber rounding it out. Here's Jesse Cole. Now on three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. Leading off for the Showtime it is. Hampton, a switch hitter. Will, of course, swing it from the right side. Party animals and fans alike participating in his patented walk-up song boogie. Risa Natural righty, although especially on last year's tour, took the vast majority of his at-bats from the left side. Rolls this one over. Cox attacking. Trick play between the legs. Throw to first just in time. How about that from the glove magician? Look, Ryan Kellogg was able to induce four ground outs, only one fly out. He's continuing that early on in this ball game, and the first one goes to Ryan Cox, and he is now tied atop of that trick play leaderboard with Dustin Baber. Chris Walker, the first base umpire, right there to make the call. First pitch behind the derriere of Dalton Cornett. Looks like Hampton before him in his third world tour. Big cut and miss. DC3, amazing at getting bad on ball. But he does not get cheated on many swings, as you see once again, <laughs> nearly falls out of the box. He is 13 for 26 on the tour, tied for the lead in hits, hitting a perfect 500. But if there's a man who is going to slow down DC3, it's going to be Ryan Kellogg. Cornette batted just 190 against Kellogg on last year's tour. And how about this? A little floater in the left field and a nice sliding catch by Rack. The Bananas flashing the leather early in this ball game. Extra style points for Robert Anthony Cruz. You get to see this one again. <laughs> wow, he really went in there. That was a Ty Cobb-esque power slide. Little twist to it to boot. And now Jake Skoll. Big cut and a miss. That is the slider from Kellogg, part of a five pitch mix. Curveball, changeup, four seam, and two seam fastballs. Floats that one down and out. That is the big bender. Yeah, and Ryan Kellogg was definitely trying to throw the chase pitch there. Goes right back to the bender. Does a little Napoleon Dynamite dance. And how about this? Two minutes and two seconds. All it takes for Ryan Kellogg to set down the party animals in order. Another look. It looked like the slider there to get strike three on Skull. Pair of guys with seven years of minor league service there. Kellogg gets the better of Jake. And now you look at the party animals defensive alignment. From left to right for the bad boys, it is Tanner Thomas, Hampton, and then Skull. Third to first in the infield, Noah Fisher, Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan. There's Cornette behind the dish, and Brett Helton on the mound. And look, you've got every member of this starting infield, excluding Dalton Cornette with a trick play on the season for the animals. But of course, we're looking at Dustin Baber. Right now tied at the top of this trick play leaderboard with Ryan Cox after his trick play on the first play of the game. But Baber, again, getting so many opportunities at second base. You never know when he could go air Baber or just reach out and barehand a ball coming down to him. And hey, you never know if he's got a sweet double trick play in store with his good buddy Chase Acuff up the middle. Let's get a gander at Brent the Jet on the bump. Another former affiliated man, guy who spent four years in the Pittsburgh Pirates minor league organization. And once he was added to the animal starting rotation last year, turned into one of the best pitchers we've ever seen in this young sport. Yeah, that's right. Brett Helton is leading the tour right now in innings pitched with 11 so far. And here within the confines of Grayson Stadium, posted a three and two home record. He had two starts in 13 games here in Grayson, 26 and two thirds innings pitched, only five sprints allowed and 15 strikeouts and a 130 ERA plus in this ballpark. Now you look at the Bananas lineup opposing him. DR Meadows, the only man truly due up because if he leaves Grayson Stadium, the inning will be over. Behind him, Howell, Oberst, and then Deeb cleaning it up. Rack hitting fifth. 
then Hosley, Jones Jr., Olsen, Leroy, and Cox as the second leadoff. Yeah, I mean, this is a lineup that hit Brett Elton pretty well in his last start. They collected 11 hits against the righty. They're gonna DR Meadows to just one base here. That would have been an easy double for DR if Fisher doesn't block that one. Meadows always a threat to steal. He's two for four in his attempts this year. Cornette has caught him twice. That one, is it off the knob of the bat? It was. Gabe Howell, another former collegiate banana, 2019 and 2020 seasons. The record holder for most home runs in a collegiate season for the Nanners. Blasted nine out in 2019. Has not left the park so far this year, but six for 20. He is heating up. Look, we're seeing some pretty good stuff from Gabe Howell through these first six games. And what really stands out to me, three ball four sprints for Gabe Howell, and he still is yet to strike out, and there is the <laughs> broadcaster's jinx. In real time, no less. Gabe Howell, my apologies. That, that is the worst timing of my broadcasting career. You've got to get him some flowers Holy or something. Smokes. That was wild. Holy shnikes. <laughs> That's that devastating right-on-right -right changeup from Helton. Oberst flies this one out of the park. Another former collegiate banana. 2019, 2020, and 2021 for Dan as he bounces this to Acuff, who bounces it to Baber, who fires over to first. 6-4-3, double play, trick play for Chase Acuff. A great double play getting Brett Helton out of the frame. Got to appreciate the trick play from Acuff. And Bika, we might be seeing double. Two minutes and two seconds, the time for Brett Helton there. That is absurd. Let's send it down to Shark. Last week, the Savannah Bananas family, as well as the Savannah community, lost two of its great ambassadors. Wallace Allen Murphy was born in Canton, Illinois. In 1975, Wally received his master's degree in social work from the University of Illinois. Between 1979 and 2004, Wally worked as a psychiatric social worker in Hopkinsville, Kentucky before moving to Savannah in early 2004. He's been a mainstay at Grayson Stadium ever since. Wally Murphy never missed a game. You can always count on Wally being front row behind home plate, taking pictures and keeping his scorebook at every Bananas game. After each game, like clockwork, Wally would be down on the field ready to talk to Coach Gillum about that night's contest. As Tyler Gillum remembers, Wally would come down, ask if he was going to go, turn on his cell phone camera and say, start talking. Then he'd post a recap and video on his blog every single night. Wally passed away last week at the age of 82. Banana Land will miss you. Logan James Spencer was born in Wyandotte, Michigan. Shortly thereafter, he and his family moved to New Bern, North Carolina, where he spent most of his childhood before moving to Savannah. Logan was a master mason at Tiny Lodge number 762 a noble of the Ailey Shrine Temple and a beloved member of the Pirate Unit. He was also a member of the Police Emerald Society of Southeast Georgia. When the Savannah Bananas were born, Logan was one of the first fans to show us some major love and support. He was all in. Every game, when gates open, and he got to the seat at the top deck, he texts me and say, it's so great to hear that voice over the speaker. Logan was an original member of the Top Deck crew, a house father to many of our players, and Logan's daughter, Sparrow, was the very first banana baby. Logan Spencer passed away last week at the age of 33. A true parting animal for life, his legacy of laughter and generosity will live forever in our hearts. So fans, Please help us celebrate these two men as they have celebrated with us since the very beginning.
Crowley. I commend Shark for keeping it together through all of that. Wally and Logan, both incredibly influential for the CPL bananas and banana ball alike. Boy, oh boy, is it, is it tough to leave, to lose the two of them. Two guys who supported the bananas through and through were always guys you looked forward to seeing in the party plaza after the game. And uh, yeah, I will never forget my interactions with either of those guys. With Logan, just how cheerful and fun he was to be around. Yeah. And with Wally, just talking about the nitty gritty of the <laughs> games, the stats. I mean, it was a real honor to be in the presence of both of those guys. Could not have said it any better myself. What with Logan and Wally watching on from above, we head to the second inning. What a heck of a first frame we had in their honor. Dueling two minute and two second innings from Helton and Kellogg. And now we have a limbo bar on the mound. Kellogg leading the charge. He's, I thought he was going to pitch it. Okay, who has the ball? Was it Cox? Not Rack. Howell, no. Oh, wow. Fisher hit a home run, except it was about 50 feet foul. Golly. Absolute chaos with the boys and the Wimbo there. And Danny Hosley delivered that pitch. Noah Fisher wise to try and go after that one. Unfortunately, just couldn't keep it in fair play there. What a wacky sequence of events. Fisher with a one-two count now. That one just misses up and out. The cleanup man, so it'll be four, five, six after Kellogg faced the minimum. Hot shot, gobbled up by Howell. And across the diamond, four up, four down now for Kellogg. And just a really solid play at third base by Gabe Howell. Again, this guy's mostly played shortstop in his career, now makes the move over to the hot corner. And he's looked tremendous for the most part. Just good job getting in front of that ball, fielding it on the hop and being able to retire Noah Fisher. Now Tanner Thomas, a recurring theme in Banana Land, former collegiate banana on the 2018 and 19 teams. This is his third campaign as a party animal. Base A cup of a blue base hit. And again, we just continue to praise the instincts of DR Meadows. Guy who started his career as an infielder, playing lots of second, a lot of third, makes this transition to center field, and he gets better and better every day. And it's evident by plays like that. Man, what a big out. Ryan Kellogg really having his defense back him early on here in this home opener. You know what I'm going to say about Garrett Delano, Josh? Former collegiate banana. Since we've got our home opener here, it's always good to point it out. 2018 banana in the rookie seasons of the man behind the dish Bill Leroy and Cowboy Kyle Lewix who should be first out of the pen behind Kellogg tonight uh, Garrett Delano by the way first party animal to explode a watermelon here in Grayson Stadium in 2024 I saw that pregame also true and also very important to bring up Kellogg misses down count even at two and two Delano 0 for 7 on the tour but he's driven in four runs because it's still being hitless. And let's remember, 56 plate appearances last season and only four sprints now gives this one a drive out to right field. But Danny Hosley had a great beat on that one. And Ryan Kellogg gets out of this inning three minutes and 37 seconds. We're seeing great stuff from Kellogg early on. Ryan holds serve. Let's get it down to our party animals correspondent, Drake Toll in the stands. Hey, Vico, Josh, I am out here on the home opener in the brand new addition to Grayson Stadium. A thousand new seats added to the outfield, and, well, it's actually 999. One of them was taken out by the star of the party animals, Reese Hampton. That's right. In spring training, he had a home run so far and so hard, it went clean through a seat. You see it signed right here. Sorry, Reese was here. Hampton seat. Maybe we'll send it up to Cooperstown. But for right now, I've got a banana ball that's signed by the man himself, Reese Hampton. And since we got all these new fans right here, 
Let's see who wants a Reese Hampton signed baseball. Oh, 73 from the right side and a great catch up there, guys. Back to you in the booth. Thank you very much, Mr. Toll. That is some Paul Bunyan type heroics from Reese Hampton. Yeah, I mean, he's been putting on a show in, well, he put on a show in the scrimmages here in Grayson Stadium. Yes. And even his batting practice performances just continue to wow you out there. And boy, I mean, with, with the wall being lowered in right field now, it feels like it is really going to play more as a hitter's park, Grayson Stadium. So we should see Reese Hampton lead the yard plenty of times here in 2024. It used to be called the Grayson Graveyard, but now, as you mentioned, Josh, I think that's an important thing to note here. Not just a thousand more seats, the right field wall from the pole to the fan wall in right center has been lopped in half. It is not 16 feet, it is now eight feet tall. And it's part of the reason why in the last scrimmage, we saw two Robert Anthony Cruz home runs and one Jackson Olsen bomb. And Reese in the scrimmages had a home run over that wall as well. I mean, we saw a lot of guys who were really enthused about some of these renovations in this ballpark. Four, five, six for the Nanners. Michael Deeb, the aforementioned Robert Anthony Cruz as Deeb finds himself a barrel. It'll plop out of the reach of Skull. Big turn, but he'll hold up at first base. The man in his fourth world tour replaced by another man who's been here since the One City World Tour in Mobile, Alabama, Malachi Mitchell. Cruz told Josh and I in the prep season when we chatted with him, he would be swinging for the fences. Boy, oh boy, sidearm changeup from Helton and a doozy. A doozy of a strikeout call from Chapman as well. That was a filthy pitch. And that's one of the newest things that Brett Helton has added to his repertoire is the fact that he is able to now go sidearm and mix up some of these arm angles as look at Danny <laughs> Hosley sail his way up to the batter's box. Thank goodness. I watched Moana on the plane ride from Savannah to Phoenix last week. It was the first time. It will not be the last. That movie slaps. And that song had me crying on a jam-packed flight. It's beautiful, man. Yes. That's it very nice. Beautiful. Look out, Haas. 2-0 count. Hosley four for seven on this young tour. Cranks that one, dead center. Hampton turning his back to the plate, Malachi. Was waiting to see if it would get over his head. Now he's going to try and tag the third, and he does. That is amazing speed. He had to retreat back to second before he hightailed it to third, but he got there in time anyway. I mean, only with speed, like Flash the Kid, can you get to third base after just going back and forth between the second. You win an inning, you get a point. Points are the way you win the ball game. Nanner's up by one. Let's get it down to Maceo Harrison and the boys who will dance us into the third frame. Maceo superb, as was Flash, Noah Nisnik, Noah Bridges, and Christian Dearman. Now as we head to the top of the third, bottom of the order for the party animals, Taj Porter, Jason Swan, Dustin Baber due to swing it. We have our shortstop, Ryan Cox on the mic. Cox, you got us. I got you, boys. Hello, welcome, and happy home game. And happy birthday to you. Trick play race early in the season. Uh, I think I think about it every day. Uh, the, the crown's heavy. Dustin yeah. Baber is a very fierce competitor. Jackson Olsen is going to get himself into that race. I'm almost late to the 3-2-2. <laughs> uh, 
I will resume after this. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Better late than never. You're on point. Oh, Kellogg. Load. First 3 2 2 of the year. Oh! <laughs> Over DR. Good wood there from Swan. And that's the first hit of the ball game for the animals. Wow. Coxie, that was a doozy of a dance, man. I was. If we didn't uh, implement I can't throw my glove, I was going to throw my glove at that. I thought I had a good chance at it. I did not I did not know that we had banned glove throwing. We have a surprise here. Dustin Baber at the dish, also with the mic on him. Hi, Baber. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you hit me this, I'm going to trick double play you. OK. <laughs> Oh, no. That got you, babes. We saw Kellogg get Delano on the knob of the bat, but that got your body. Yeah, I did. It got me in the elbow right there. Well, that was anticlimactic. I'm sorry, guys. I should have hit the curveball. That was a big bender. I did. I didn't even. I forgot to react. I think Ben didn't even get to me. That one kind of hurt. It missed the pad. I think we need extra large pads from now on. Let the people in charge know. <laughs> Coxie, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. That was an amazing play, bud. I appreciate that. <laughs> See if Reese got another one in. There's one guy I put my money on right now, it's Reese. Yeah, we gotta make sure we get out of this inning. <laughs> uh, hey, Gabe, here, I might come. Gabe, I might go. Wow. So close. Barely. <laughs> if it takes me, if it takes me here, I'm coming. <laughs> yes. so, so, Coxie, that's you letting Gabe know that you'll get the lead runner if you're going to your left. Yeah, Mr. Hampton's pretty fast. Is that three? Uh, we got count. We got count. All right, three. Here we go. Three one count, guys. This is yeah. how we move it. Here we go. Make him swing it here. Oh, that's falling out. Here we go. That yeah, was good. Make him swing it. He wants to. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Bit high, ball four sprint. All seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher have to touch the ball before it's live. Reese busting yeah. it out of the box, gets two bases. Do you want me to put Jordan in? Is your knee okay? I didn't even think about yeah. it. You good? Okay. Good to hear that your knee's feeling better, Baber. Yes, sir. You know, that week off, a little extra day with the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, you're my friend. Is that Biko up there? Yeah. Hey, Biko. Hey, Baba. <laughs> hey, guys. There he is. He's white. Yeah, what? So the, the animals strike first. Reese grabs his tour leading seventh run driven in. Yeah, that guy's good. He's hey, good. you know you're leading the tour with seven runs batted in. <laughs> what? What's Hampton have to say about that? Shout out Josh, I'm on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shout out to the boys. <laughs> Now Cornette, flew to left his first time. Little infield half in for you guys, Cox. Yeah, I'm trying to see what we can get. Maybe Baber at the plate. <laughs> Shorten up what DC's looking at. That's out, that's out. What are the chances? Fan, please. Chances? No, let's go. You see all that concrete out there? Yeah. Things destined to avoid the fans. Vico, can we just like look at the upgrades? and Looking for one fan to show up ready to make a play. This is upgrades, man. That's foul. Come on. Nope. That's shot. Oh, boy. Double. Oh, boy. Off the top of the wall. Faber scores Hampton behind him. Two run double from Cornette. That thing was stroked. That ball was yeah, that ball just continued to carry. Looks like Robert Anthony Cruz might have a chance to make a play on that one and possibly in foul territory, no less. But traveling, hitting off the wall, and it's a big two run double for Dalton Cornette. It's a great inning for the party animals to strike back and get in the point department. All right, Babe Daddy, we'll check in with you next half inning, bud. All right, bud, see you there. There goes Dustin Baber. We've still got Cox on the mic. Now to the three hole we go. That one gets the bottom of the zone against Jake Skull. He disagrees with the call. Oh my See if we can get out of this inning and get the bats going. This is how dangerous this party animals lineup is. Kellogg was cruising 
through the first eight batters, and all of a sudden, they figured it out. Cornette gets a stop sign. Let's get the ball into Coxie's hands here. There it is. Yes. Everyone just feels a lot more secure when the glove magician has controlled the banana ball. It's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. <laughs> I, I like when people hit it my way, for sure. Now, Cox, Baber touched on it, but how cool is it for you to, to be in the middle of a new and improved historic race at Stadium? It's awesome. Seeing it just from my first couple years here to the National Anthem and seeing the fans in the stands for the National Anthem really gave me chills. Just seeing this place fill itself out and really be the staple ballpark it deserves to be. Noah Fisher behind 0-2. Uh, uh, uh. You like that, Tim? I'm a fan of Shark. I'm a fan of Shark's choices. Keeps me on my toes. Throwing some new things in the rotation. It's nice. A little Electric Avenue now. That's a good pitch. All right, ideally you're going to throw a changeup down. Yeah, and get him a ground ball. That'd be nice. Oh! Looked like a cutter in on the hands. Yeah, he's got that sweep today. Whenever they're using us in number three, it's really taking up a lot of the zone. See it throw to Tanner right out of his hip and then over the plate. You choose between the plethora of trick plays in your arsenal. Uh, a lot starts with the situation, guys on base, how we're playing, um, maybe how I've previously played through the day. Oh, we've got a challenge, Ryan. Yeah, we're, uh, we're looking at that tag, I think. Okay. Cool. Might have been late. We've got you, Vince. Let's roll it in the control room whenever we have it. All right, we're looking at it now. We're talking to Vince right now. Throw to second. Can't tell there. We'll need to slow that down a ton. Once again, needs to be way slower. No, cannot. It looks like he's safe. I think it's inconclusive. Inconclusive. Call stands on the field. Thank you, Vince. Please welcome the small pickle. And finally, please welcome the tall, long pickle. Fans, you got that right. It is time for the pickle race. But I need to know who do you think is going to win? For all the men in the crowd, do you think the small pickle is going to win? Do you think the standard pickle is going to win? What about the wide pickle? Or the long pickle? Or the ladies in the crowd? Do you think the winner is going to go to the small pickle? The medium pickle? The wide pickle? Or the long tall pickle? All right. They have to race all the way around to home plate and see who's going to win this pickle supremacy. Pickles on your mark. Get set. Go. And here they go. The wide pickles off to a head start. The small pickle in behind. But look at that long pickle go. It looks like in perfect unison. The wide pickle is slowing down. Standards coming from behind. Small pickle still behind. But here it's coming down to the wire. The tall pickle has jumped ahead. Look at these pickles go. What offside. Look at this tall, long pickle. What speed. They might have lost their pickles. Ow! Oh! And for second place, he is no longer a pickle. Look at the wide pickle going for second. But fans, don't you ever forget. Big round of applause for our small pickle. A great yeah. job, buddy. And there you have it. Of course, in Banana Land, a pickle race. All right. All right. So the pickle race, a lot of build up for that one. Ended up being a runaway from, well, I can't remember what pickle was. Got to be honest. Regardless, it's a big deal. How about this? Dustin Baber with the mic on him, and we welcome in Party Animals correspondent Drake Toll. So, I got, yeah, uh, I got, let me get the bad news. I want to get out of the way.
Hey, gotta respect it. I'm not I'm not even mad. It's gonna be a back and forth race all year, so. I want the great news. What is it? In this very half inning, you can retake that <laughs> lead. I've always said this. The trick play race is all about opportunities. So if he gets more than me, then he'll win it. If I get more than him, I'll win it. So it's, he's such a good competitor, such a good athlete, such a good talent that we're both going to do some crazy stuff. And it's just part of the game. It's back and forth. That's what they want. Nope. This is, a, this is a good chance right here out of Olsen right here. Behind the count, I think. Is it two strikes, Nico? Two strikes, babe. Two, All right. Yeah, two strikes. High chance of an off-speed pitch here going to me. Caught it. <laughs> Tied. Oh. Dustin Baber through the legs. And just like that, we're all knotted up again between Baber and Cox for the tour lead and trick plays. Hey. Dustin, what did you see on that one? Well, like I said, like I said, high chance off-speed pitch for him to go ahead and hit it to me. I'm pretty sure Brett Helton, if you go back and check the tape, went to a changeup, and uh, Jackson loves to roll those over to that hole, so this is good, uh, good positioning right there. That's it. Dustin, how locked in are you right now on how many trick plays that you have and how many trick plays Cox have? So I can't lie and say that I'm not keeping an eye on it, but for the most part, I'm just going out there. I have a goal after last year coming up short. I had the goal of 100. I just gotta, I gotta break that that barrier. I didn't get it last year. That's what my my mind's set on. The race to win that that would be great, but it's more so important that it's more important to me that I break that 100 barrier and cross that threshold. But I did the math. No one else did. Three tricks a game, you can break the 200 threshold too. So let's not put it out of the question yet. So you're saying you're fighting for 200 this season, much less than 100. Hey, you set the bar too low, you'll okay. always achieve it. You're going to set it too high and then strive for it. That's so it. which is it, Dustin? Is it 100 uh, no. or 200? I want to break 100, 100, but I'm not setting my sights that low. I know I'll get there, guys. Drake, I hate to interrupt this riveting conversation. Ryan Cox on the mic as well. Oh, Coxie! That's a base knock. You guys are shining on the mic. Staying hot, Dude, we, staying hey, hot, staying Coxie, hot. Coxie, I believe we uh we just stay on the mic for the rest of our career. <laughs> I gotta stay on the mic all game. Yeah, I'm just saying. I don't. I don't really. I feel more comfortable talking to people than standing out here by myself. I get lonely. As long as I didn't hit the ball to you, baby, I'm happy. <laughs> oh, you don't want to help out the cause, man? I help the cause enough. <laughs> I'm the most t charitable donor you got. <laughs> Air blew right up his cape after that, too. It's perfect timing. Hey, babe, so while we got you both on the mic, what makes you the better trick play master? Ah, I wouldn't even. Oh! No, two! Two! Acuff didn't catch that in the air. He brought it down. What's up to tell? Yeah, I think he was coming down with it and dropped it, so. I think that ball's in the glove, and then we squat, and then it rolls out. Yeah, I do think that was intentional play. Okay, we're oh. going to rule it was a catch. Josh said he thinks that just, was intentional. Yeah, I Made think him. just a catch. Alright, all right, go ahead. I want to make, make that play, Josh. <laughs> it worked out better for us in the end. Let me ask like, you a question. If it was all the same amount of outs, there was one out across the board. Did you catch it or did you not catch it? It was just one out. You he said he didn't catch it, guys. Who is out? Who is out? So the line drive? We don't know. I can hear. Oh, wow. I caught it. Okay, Dar, I think you're out. Line. So where do I, go? I don't you're right think here. the you're ball right was dropped intentionally. He's right here. It's just whether the line it was on the exchange caught. or not. Tell him to hang on. Hang hey, hold, 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 hold. Wait, wait. Yeah, we got it right. We got it right, Bill. All right. Yeah, I think, I think they're trying to figure We're good. good. All right, cool. You know, I just got to, hey, just got to. Hold him accountable, so Reggie both style. runners stay put. Now yeah. two outs in the half inning. Yes, here. it was caught. He comes down and oh. falls out. And we're playing banana ball. Is that hey, barrel or is that hitter? You think, Cox? You get a hold of that one? Oh, oh. oh that's a hit. That's down. That's way oh, down. I gotta go. I gotta score. Oh my gosh! Oh. I gotta get there. Get there. Got him! Oh! He missed it. He missed what a it. slide, Ryan Cox! 
He missed me. He missed me. He missed me. He, missed me. <laughs> he can't touch it. He can't touch it. Why, why do we have two outfielders? Someone play MC Hammer. He can't touch this. Why do we have two outfielders? Why, where, why are there two guys in the outfield? I couldn't tell you, Deke. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I just see Tanner playing out chess out there, bro. Tanner Thomas was hanging out with fans. Hey, yeah. he's playing chess out there with the boys. Hey, that's the dirtiest slide of 2024. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I, yeah, that wasn't. I'm not good. Hey, the fans first, you know. Okay, Coxie, we'll chat. Oh, oh my God. We'll chat with you right now. That Are you was okay? a laser beam. Are you okay? <laughs> boy, hey, Holy missile. Hey, babes, a pleasure being with you as always. You're going to lead the tour this year. <laughs> you stay hey. on the mic. I'm coming back down there to see you and give you a hug. Absolutely, big guy. I love that. So the party animals win the inning three runs to two. They tie the game at one point apiece. I feel Mike. And we still get to have Ryan Cox and Dustin Baber hey. on the mic. Just hey. trying to catch my breath. Coxie, was that the greatest slide of your banana ball and baseball career? Yeah, just, yeah that was pretty cool. I saw it all in like slow motion. Oh, he, he left because he thought that we turned the double play. That was it. Correct. That was the confusion by Tanner. Yeah. Okay. Hey, was that guy out at home? That's an assist. No, hey, swim move like crazy. Hey, oh, great throw, though. We're looking at the replay of your slide right now, Ryan. That was unbelievable. Felt like Michael Phelps out of water. <laughs> Here I am, here I'm not. Ripped a hole in these band, brand new pinstripes. Uh, oh. It's starting to look like those fanatic pants, huh? Coxie, what's your favorite pair? Hey, what's your favorite uniform this year? My favorite what? Uniform this year. Is it the pennies or is it the uh, tequila sunrise? I like the pennies. Uh, uh, I like the all whites forever, but the pennies are, they gotta be every Friday. And I, I know you're a fashion mogul out there, so I just wanted to see from the, uh, from the mind of a genius out there. Baber, are you gonna hit me a ground ball? Are you almost up? Uh, who's up? Nature here? There's a chance I could end the inning here with a ground ball to you. You tied it up. I'm about to break the tie. <laughs> oh, hey, hell just, a, hey, just a heads up. I'm just trying to impress a little bit. I called the pitch and the ball. So, you gotta call the exact pitch that's coming to you. Okay. Alright. I'll work on it. Fill it out. <laughs> call Jackson rolling over this a change one. Up. Dang it. <laughs> uh, Nico, what's the uh, scoreboard looking like on trick plays? Who else is on there? So Jackson Olsen is number three with nine of them on the tour. All right. Like that, like that. Who, where, who's the first outfielder? Like, who's the first outfielder? Jake Skull Skull. and DR. They are now tied. They're tied at five apiece. There it is. I'm calling it tonight. DR is hitting another one. The heads up. A lot of balls to center field out of the boys tonight. So. I like that prediction. Yeah. Go might hit a worm for you. Yeah. 3-0 to Delano. Oh, what a swing. That's a great piece of hitting. Oh, my. See what he can do on that ankle. Nearly tumbles around first, and he will cruise in a second. Oh boy. That's the first hit of the Come tour on. for Garrett Delano. Uh-oh. That puts me in the hole. Yeah. There's a chance. Things are happening. There's a big Ground chance. Ball. Taj hit the ground ball that Cox took the trick play lead uh, on. Yep, here comes another one. Hey, I'm just gonna be honest. This is probably him and Dan Hazi talked for the best changeup, so a rollover is a uh, high possibility. Oh, what a swing. Gas, right down the chute. Oh, nice stay inside it. I love that. Love that right there out of him. Stay inside it. Look at the right field line right now. A lot of room. A lot of. I think that was a right good thing. Oh. Jordan's about to steal third base. Good oh, no. goal on the pinch runner, though. All right. So, Coxie, you got any new ones coming through the pipeline right now? Or? I'm in the hole. I'm about to go between the legs, possibly a bounce. Ooh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. 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 I'm here at the turn. We gotta be out there. We gotta beat that. So read the That's ball. Cool. We got double play. We got double play ball. Uh -oh. Infield single for Todd. Let's see if I can hit again. Hey, double play ball, let's go. Another look, that is a tough play for Gabe. Second, second about right here. Next one, yeah. Baber on deck. I one am. at the dish. Uh-oh. 
Jason with a single his first time. See if I can avoid the baseball this time. You know? Babes, how about that? Seven games in, you get hit by a pitch. You were not hit in 69 games last year. No, I don't know what I'm hitting targeted this year as of last year. It's better than Cornette. He also was not hit by a pitch all last year. And then he got plunked in his first plate appearance. I don't know where the rest of my Evo shoots. Oh, there he is. Evo right. shoots, set him out. Here we go. We're on the protective gear. Wear it again. Two hey. one. Vico, what's his uh, what's Kellogg's Velo tonight? You got it for me? Uh, Trackman is not working for me. Oh. I have no numbers. <laughs> oh. oh! Didn't have a chance, Cox. Out of position. All right, here you go. Get him in here. And here comes Baber. There you go. With the bags juiced. How about this? Like I would speak it into it, huh? Speak it into existence. Oh, the Cavs. <laughs> Here we go. Want to say anything to Vico? No? All right, he's not talking right now. What's up, babes? I was saying hi to Bill. Oh, yeah, he's, he's locked in. That's oh, a good piece! Look at him go! Uh-oh, oh, baby! Light the boy up! Uh -oh. Light him up every game! Here four, comes four, four. 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 Bases clearing, two-bagger, Dustin Baber with the mic on him! Boys just hit with the mics on. Dude, oh, the mic's up, God. right? <laughs> it's a little mic's up action. <laughs> Are you not entertained? That's what I'm saying, right? Hey, I'll take some three RBIs right there. Second double of the year. You just went from two to five RBIs. There you go. I'm only two, what, two behind Reese right now? You are. Look at that. I'm catching Reese in RBIs. I said I was catching Reese in RBIs. Are you not proud of me? Say you're proud. I Thank you. <laughs> Three stakes for the price of one swing. Vico, it's only taken me a year and a half, but I learned how to swing the bat a little bit. Listen, man, <laughs> your numbers all throughout your career are no joke. You keep doing what you do with the glove, we'll keep you around. Oh, that's what I love to hear right there. Everything outside of that is just gravy. Look at that go, huh? Same goes for Coxie. Oh, Coxie's just an absolute demon up there. But Co Coxie's offensive season was a little more impressive last year. Oh, clearly. We ah. got Coxie the demon. We tried to shift him, and then he just pokes it perfectly. Who is this guy? Mr. Unshiftable. <laughs> Unshiftable. Who hits a home run first between the two of you? Uh, I'm going to give it to Coxie here. I might give it. I've seen you hit the wall more times than I have. <laughs> but here's the thing. I am... Absolutely hard set on hitting the ball the other way right now, so I'm not even thinking about a home run. I'm trying to take Jackson Olsen's glove right off his hand. <laughs> huh? Oh, I might go for this inning. Yeah, I'm trying to hit the ball the other way. Now, follow up question Who does the Vincent Chapman better between the two of you? Uh, just look at it right now here. Uh, oh, you not see this? Oh, I'm, we're looking. <laughs> We've got a whole camera devoted to that. I think Baber wins. Look at that, huh? My lower Interview back, I just turned a year older, you know? <laughs> oh, get to it, Reeser. Whatever the kids are doing these days. <laughs> Glasses oh. in session. Feels like a change up down. Reese Hampton just absolutely smokes a ground ball right at me. Oh. Oh. That, Look out! Oh my gosh. That bender can't break 70 miles an hour. It's, it's. The fact that he actually put a good swing on it is impressive. Great wow. A slider out there, back foot, huh? Back foot and a beauty. Yeah. Second strikeout of the night for Kellogg. Not an easy guy to get on a strikeout right there, so. Here comes Dalton Cornett, who had a two-run double his last time. Nearly left the park, Oppo. Oh, got to score on a single here. We got one out or two? Two babes. Two, all right. Board says one. Scoreboard's behind. Ooh, nine hits. Two outs. Just, I'm going to let him know. Two outs. There you go. Appreciate you. We got two. Yep, we got the lights going now. All right. Got to be there on the single. Oh, that's a ball. I, I speak and change happens, baby. <laughs> you are the conductor of this whole ship. <laughs> that's what everyone calls me. 
Coxie, attaboy. Couldn't really do anything cool on that one. Now, down four runs in the inning. He added some nice spice, though, at the end there. This old pose, you know, we're trying to plus everything around here. Uh, really make the best show for the digital and the fans. <laughs> what is that? What is that fist? Back and forth dance there, Cox. That is the third out punch out. Um, feel free to use it in your next TikTok dance. It's free. Ooh. Yeah, you can find it online at the one two punch .com. <laughs> Hey, Cox, we're bringing it back. John Wall. John Wall's coming back this year. I got to do Hey Baby. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Here we go. That is one thing my TikTok is lacking, is dancing. So I'll, I'll incorporate that. I'll do it with you. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. All right. I want to be a cool kid. Can I dance? Yeah, babes. Thank you. You're all in. <laughs> yeah. Hey, baby o'clock. Now we're now we're assessing hey baby mechanics. I've really been working in the off season to perfect this. See the hard at the end there. You gotta get the hard in there. Make sure they know. This guy's still mic'd up. <laughs> ah. Scully, what's up, buddy? Scully. Oh, there he goes. Scully loves the mic. Oh. Hey, stay tuned. See if I can uh, add another hit after drinking a beer later on. Hey, that's a really good tease, babes. I'm, I'm telling you right now, we got to get those stats, Josh. I'm, I'm so intrigued on last season. Last season, we're still working on. This season, we have them. You have one hit this year after chugging a beer. I know, and it's six games, and I feel like, have I walked? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, little known fact, the mentality going to the last half of drinking is swing as soon as it gets close. Interesting. So, it, it's just swing and hope for the best. So far, not so good, but... Now, it would be impressive if we got this inning to Cox here. What we got? We got Diva. That's fourth, right? Cox is due up seven in this oh, inning. Cause, well, yeah, well, you were right. Deep's the cleanup man. As much as I love to see him up on the plate right here, don't want to see him, so that would be a bad sign for us. But maybe he can give me that lead and trick. Who knows? You guys are currently locked at 15 apiece to remind everybody at home. Oh, yeah. Here we go. What we got? Deep least a single to right his first time. I know, Deep's liable for a changeup away to roll it over. Oh, he stayed through it. Wow, two for two, Michael Deep. I know, I can swing the bat, huh? A pair of barrels. Yeah, two great hits to right now center for Michael Deep. And Reese Hampton, just when you think he might lay out and try and match D. Armedus, who had a great all out catch early in the ball game, decides to let this one sit bounce for a hit for Deeb, and, and that's something you can afford to do when you're up three runs in an inning and looking for that second point as well. Huh? I got it, I got it. I'll be there. What we got here? I don't know. Oh! Has Cruz fed you a trick play this year, baby? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't think so either. I also know he's super fast, so double play is going to be tough here. We've got three balls here. Uh, we gotta get some outs here. Here we got. First struck out swinging his first time. Oh, that's a chance shot. Get it hit. Get it hit. Oh! Oh! Team able to scamper back to first. That's a heck of a play from Skull. All right, calling it right now. Got Reese Alexiades. It's gonna be a ground ball to chase a cup. I'm going to hit it between the legs, transfer. Double play, end the inning. So Reese pinch hitting for Hosley here. Oh, that's out of play. Maybe. Wow. That was hit high. I'm telling you right now, watch this off speed pitch. A cup to me between the legs. Three outs. Reese going no BGs here. Switch it up after a slow start to the tour. It is awful early. Oh! I he, did, he did not get cheated. <laughs> I asked Reese Alexiatis about his hitting approach when he first got here. He said, swing as hard as you can. So, I love to add him. Rack has a similar approach. 
You know what I just realized, Pico, which I'm kind of upset? I didn't post a video tonight for the game. Oh, no. Dude, I'm, I'm slacking here. That's a fireable offense. Oh, God. Cox, you get a video out today? No, not today. Uh-oh. Oh, we're, we're flunking. Trying to just let the oh. cool things on the field promote what, me socially. Where'd you have that one, guys? Just a pinch low. <laughs> Full count here, full count. Oh, get out, get that out, get that out. Got him. There's two. Boy, Alexiotis is quick. He is, look at that play out of DC3, huh? Like a cat out of his crouch. I'm just blessed to be surrounded by this much talent on the field, you know? Completely agree. All right, so we need EJ Olsen and Leroy to get on to get Coxie up to the dish. EJ is uh, EJ is due for another barrel. He had a really good time last time. Oh, good pitch. EJ Big. walked off the second inning. So, Beekster, can I ask you your favorite trick so far of the tour? Not just me, but everybody. Yes, I, I think it's it's some it's between Reese's behind the back on the run going backwards. That would be Hampton. Yeah. And Coxie's trick. Oh yeah, one hiked like up in Tampa. Look out, Noah Fisher never found the ball. Dallas. I'm an all-star. That's a fact. Both guys get a hit. And now we throw it down to Jolie Shabala. There are 400,000 children and teens in foster care without permanent home. To raise awareness and bring families together, we created a nonprofit called Bananas Foster that dedicated to celebrating Clock in Banana Land always warms the hearts. Tonight, the Hill family at the center of it all, licensed for 12 years, and have welcomed 39 children into their home. Yeah, so cool to honor and celebrate the Hills, and it's just cool to see Bananas Foster back here in Grayson Stadium, where, if you remember our last game in Grayson Stadium in 2023, a big night for Bananas Foster is the party animal starter on the mound tonight, Brett Helton took the hill in that one, threw a complete game, and cut off all his hair for Bananas Foster as well. One of the more memorable home games from last season. Speaking of Helton, back-to-back 19 pitch innings for him. File that one into the random. Right up there with the dueling two-minute and two-second first innings. Now, Cowboy Kyle Lewig's out on the bump. You saw the graphic, it disappeared, here it is again. His first ever relief appearance in Banana Ball, his first time as a reliever as a Savannah Banana since August 16th of 2020 when he came in to relieve Joshua South in the Coastal Plain League South Championship Games in Luther Woolard Field in Macon, Georgia against the Bakers. Wow, unbelievable statistic from you, Biko. And just to put the exact number on Kyle Lewick's banana ball career, 43 games he's appeared in all have been starts. Now game number 44 for the righty comes in relief. And well, it's 
been a little bit of an unlucky start for Cowboy Kyle. Seven earned runs in seven innings pitched, but all the advanced metrics suggest he's had an unlucky start. He's controlling his controllables out there, getting good uh, results on not hitting batters and getting strikeouts and whatnot. But, you know, the advanced metrics just suggest that, you know, the defense hasn't always been stellar behind Cowboy Kyle. He comes in here for three, four, five. So part of the thinking in bringing Kyle out of the pen is he doesn't have to start with Reese Hampton and Dalton Cornette. Instead, he starts with the beef of the order, Skull, Fisher, and Thomas. And he is greeted with an absolute laser beam to the right field wall. Skull digging for two. The throw to second, a laser beam, but cut off. Alexiotis out there. After Hosley started in right. And Jake two for three on the night. That's his second double and third extra base hit of the tour. Yeah, and you know Jake Skull wants to come in and put up a good series here in Savannah considering the numbers here last year were phenomenal. And also, this is a guy who was held hitless in Peoria. He did not record a single hit across those three games. And for Skull last year here in Grayson Stadium, batted 366 with 15 extra base hits and a 483 on base percentage. And he wants to keep that up here in 2024. Is that good? Uh, not too shabby. Fisher has grounded out, flown out, and now struck out tonight. Kyle gasses him up. Now it'll be Tanner Tinder Thomas, who's 0 for 2. Reached on a trick play, missed, and has flown out himself. And that's the exact way you want to follow up surrendering a leadoff double if you're Cowboy Kyle. Just three pitches to set down Noah Fisher. And now you get to attack Tanner Thomas, who's had good success against you, but not at the level of Jake Skull, Reese Hampton, Dalton Cornette. Skull a pest on the bags. He is dancing off of second as Kyle sneaks a rising heater past Thomas, his collegiate bananas teammate in the summers of 18 and 19. Just misses the outside corner. Broken bat, that one's gonna be down. Skull barreling around second, hit an excellent jump and will score easily. Party Animals push a run across for the third straight frame. And Tanner Thomas grabs his sixth stake of the tour. Yeah, Tanner Thomas cannot be stopped for the Party Animals right now. Now has hits in six of his first seven games here on the tour. Had back-to-back multi-hit games in the final two games in Peoria last weekend. And half of his total hits in 2024 have gone for extra bases. Three doubles and a home run. He's always a threat to run. There's Chase Acuff who has flown out to Meadows in center both times. and get to the top of the zone. Lifted to right center, Alexiades calls off DR. Important second out there for Lewigs as he gets his 2021 collegiate teammate. And Garrett Delano, one for two on the night. A double his last time down the right field line, his first hit of the tour. It's the slider in there for strike one. Cowboy Kyle, four seam, two seam cut fastballs. Slider, a curveball, and then a changeup that has been added to the arsenal here in 2024. As that one just misses the bottom of the zone. Yeah, good location from Cowboy Kyle, just couldn't quite get the call as now Tanner Thomas takes off, and Bill LeRoy with a great throw to second base, pinpoint accuracy will nail Thomas, and that's the second time this season that LeRoy has caught Tanner Thomas at second base, and waiting to see if we possibly see a party animals challenge as Thomas really trying to encourage Mike Vivasis to use that challenge, believing he was in there safely. Oh boy. He may have a case. 
Tough to tell. For now, we're sending it to the Party Animals correspondent, Drake Toll. Hey, guys, I am way down on the ground here with Jeff and Ty. Jeff, Ty, why are you Party Animals fans? Man, they play hard, they party hard, life short, gotta love them. And because our son's one of the players. Oh, oh, which, which, <laughs> which son is on the team? Garrett DeClue, 23, gotta love it. Oh, my gosh, so who is your favorite party animal then? Dustin Bieber! <laughs> oh, well, sorry, Garrett. It looks like these guys love Dustin Bieber, the tour leader in Trick Plays, who will likely finish the tour of the Trick Play leader. Now, Ty, tell me, why the party animals and not the bananas? Garrett aside. Oh, my goodness. This is so much fun, and we always love the underdog because that's who we love to root for. Yeah. And then, Jeff, for you, I mean, what makes a banana ball game so special? This is your first one. How do you, how do you sum it up? Oh, it's fast. It's unbelievable. There's so much energy. It is unbelievable. You've got to come experience. Biko, Josh, the DeClue family from Littleton, Colorado, loves the party animals, but more importantly, Dustin Baber. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Toll and the DeClues alike. I had no idea that Garrett's family was in attendance. I have to run down there after the game, try and grab a hold of them and see how Garrett's friend Kevin is doing, who lives in their basement. Uh, that's a fact. Little backstory here, if we can dive into that quickly before this inning commences. Kevin helped Garrett DeClue learn how to backflip on the mound within a span of 30 minutes. And now Kevin is still living in his parents' house. Kevin, hope you're watching. Grant, Graham, Grayson, the rest of the DeClue family, seems as though you have been left behind in Littleton. Hopefully, you're tuning in as well. Hello from Banana Land. Quick 0-2 count on Bill Leroy. It's going to be bottom of the order trying to feed the top for the Nanners. They're down two points to one. As Helton drops down and misses low. Leroy Cox, 9-10, and 10, and then DR Meadows at the top of the order. Cranked past the dive of Noah Fisher into left. Leroy thinking about two bases, and he slams the brakes. Nearly 40% of the way to second. As Thomas tosses a worm burner in. Yeah, great piece of hitting from Bill Leroy. He will be pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell. But Leroy swinging the bat really well. Two hits in game three in Peoria. Now three. Back bounce to Baber. Flip to first. Never had a chance at two. But it's Acuff's second trick play of the night. He's now 11 for 13 on the tour. Yeah, nifty play from Chase Acuff, trying to go for the double play. Really, that bounce pass didn't slow down the chance at the double play at all. And credit Dustin Baber for going with the bare hand grab there. It was the only way that they had any possible chance of still, still nailing DR Meadows as fast as he is at first base. Now Gabe Howell watches the curveball just miss the outside corner. He struck out his first time, a two-run double down the right field line. His last trip to the dish nearly takes out Malachi dancing off of third there. Powell's seven for 22 on the tour, hitting above 300. Still his, just the one strikeout that he acquired well. Josh in the first inning was saying that can he had we, not struck can out. Can we not talk about it? Can we please not talk about it? I'm done. Just an aside. Oh boy, it gets fun. Inside corner, bottom of the zone. Pitcher's pitch. Huge 2-2 here from Helton. Howell spoils it. Yeah, good battle here from Gabe Howell and I'd rather focus on the fact that he collected his first extra base hit of the tour with that two RBI double and just continues to bat really well in this two hole behind DR Meadows, which is the spot that it really feels like Tyler Gillum and Adam Byron would love for him to consistently slot into every game. Payoff pitch. Meadows takes off and it's fouled away. Two seam fastball bearing in on Gabe. He fights it off and will need a new piece of lumber. This is a big spot in this ball game, less than 45 minutes on the clock. The Bananas were out in front, one point to nothing. The Animals have won the third and fourth innings, so they now lead in the all-important 
points department by one. Bananas 90 feet from tying feet from tying this inning and preventing a further points deficit. 270 feet away from winning it. Meadows stays put this time. Howell pops it into foul territory. Fisher in pursuit. Runs out of room, and the fans do not catch it around the picnic tables. And here we go, the longest at bat we've seen of the entire game to this point. We will see a ninth pitch here between Brett Helton and Gabe Howell, who is three for nine, batting with runners in scoring position this tour. Chopper to Fisher, he has to go to first. Meadows was off on the pitch. Gabe gets the job done. His third ribeye of the night, fifth of the tour, ties the inning at a run each. So the party animals can no longer claim the point available in the fifth. Now one of the best hitters in Bananas history, Dan Oberst, can knock this game at two points each. Yeah, that's right. Dan batted 452 with a home run in 2022 between the World Tour and the Summer Series, then followed it up in 2023 with a team leading 364 batting average and 425 on base percentage. So he's really stayed just as hot here to open up 2024 with the only home run for the Bananas so far this season. Excellent stop there by Cornette to keep Meadows at second. Hardy Animals outfielders have to remain at, at least medium depth. Respecting the power of Mr. Roberst, the pride of Largo, Florida. From Long Island before that. Boy, that two-seamer from Helton is bearing down and in on righties at an alarming rate. And I think when Helton goes to the two-seamer there, it feels like he's now setting it up for the changeup 1-2 against Oberst, who probably is going to go low in the zone and does miss a little low, but more so inside. Meadows off second. Deuce is wild here in the bottom of the fifth. Inning knotted at a run apiece. Oberst taps it back to Brett, who will go behind his back. Second trick play in as many tries on the tour. And the inning ends tied, so the party animals retain their two to one lead in points. Another look at the play by Brett. Nonetheless, for the Bananas, Gabe Howell did a great job working those nine pitches and being able to get the RBI ground out as the Bananas are not trying to go down multiple points at this point in the ball game. Let's get it down to the young professor for Dizzy Musical Chairs. the sixth inning about 40 minutes on the clock this has been our slowest first five frames across seven games of the tour pace will need to be picked up a tad if we want to get all nine in and I think the only way that's going to be accomplished is we either see the pitchers work a lot faster out there on the mound or it's going to be in the hands of the bananas to get quick walk-offs and in innings and again that kind of lies on Kyle Lewigs out on the mound to continue to or to post scoreless innings. Slider gets the top of the zone. Garrett Delano disagrees. And now a 3-1 count on the Animals' extra hitter, the kid out of Callahan, Florida. And he earns his fifth sprint of the tour. He'll only get one base, still not 100% on that left ankle of his. <laughs> Ryan Cox mirrors Delano's trip back to first base, and then you get just a smidge of Garrett's patented crab celebration. Beloved from the broadcast boys. I love it. <laughs> Jordan Hussein will pinch run for him for the second time tonight. The 
foul ball from Taj Porter, who turns around to hit from the left side for the first time tonight. Taj one for two, ground out, a single and a run scored. Big hack and a miss at the slider down and in. And what people might be missing about Taj Porter is, despite having a little bit of a high strikeout rate through the first six games, he is leading all banana ball rookies in OPS plus with a 131 mark. He has been stellar for them. Knife's that one foul. He leads the tour with his nine strikeouts. He has struck out in each of the previous six games. But the batting average nearing 400. He's got an excellent eye on display right there as the count is even at two and two. And the batting average on balls in play, which then takes out the strikeouts and any home runs that a batter has, 615 for Taj Porter. When bat is on ball, it is falling in for hits. But now it's seven straight games for Tosh Porter with at least one strikeout as Cowboy Kyle will get the donut batter swinging. Three donuts for now over 5,000 fans here at Historic Racing Stadium thanks to the extra seats in the outfield. And as sweet confections being tossed out to said fans, we continue play. Jason Swan having an excellent night. Two for two, two runs scored. There goes Hussein throw from Bill. Never really had a chance to get him. Jordan Hussein still recovering from a broken hamate bone on that right hand. You can see that's where he's got all the gear. Supplying a lot of value as a pinch runner. Very quick. He's now two for two on the tour in his stolen base attempts. And look, I feel like when you can't get on the field of play and into a lineup every day, when you can come in and provide value as a pinch runner, you're trying to do it as best you can. And so, got to credit Jordan Hussein for just really phenomenal base running work. As Reese Alexiotis, who again came into this ballgame in the fourth inning, comes up with a great catch to rob Jason Swan of his third hit here in this ballgame. It's really a luxury to have Reese in right field. He was holding down center field last year when he was the Pioneer League's most valuable player in his third campaign with the Ogden Raptors. Of course, he led the league in homers, extra base hits, and walks, but what cannot be understated is how terrific he is as an outfielder. Yeah, I mean, again, the ability to play left field, right field, and center field for the Bananas has got to be an immense luxury. But with an arm like that, why not throw him in right field? As we've seen it on display a couple times, still yet to nail a runner, but that thing is deadly. <laughs> Dustin Baber, after chugging the beer, which Josh has been keeping those stats. We talked about it with Babes when he was mic'd up earlier tonight. Currently one for six on the tour. And he told us he's got to hack at the first pitch. He just got to take a big swing at it. Cues that one, Bill tries to leap Grab the ball out of the air and tag Babes all in one fell swoop. Well, big swig and big swing are close enough. It just makes good sense. That's a beautiful pitch on the black of the outside corner. And Baber behind 0-2. He's been hit by a pitch and cleared the bases with a double his last time. That was when he had the mic on him. Buckles his knees on the bender, but it does not find the plate. Party Animals have scored in three straight innings. That is runs. They pushed only one across in the fifth. The Bananas were able to equal it. And that is, once again, a perfect fastball. Right on the outside corner, a strikeout looking. And Bill Leroy still holding it. There's Scooge who adds an emphatic punch out. Bill stays put. We honor all the military members, both past and present, here in Historic Racing Stadium. Josh, myself, and everybody on the BTV crew passes that on to everybody watching at home. Thank you so much for your service. for are spending your Friday night hanging out with us in virtual Banana Land. As we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, I think it's Time we take a look at 
some of the statistics on trick plays for Ryan Cox and Dustin Baber, but spe spe specifically, out of boy, Biko, right here at Grayson Stadium. Yes, we looked at the overall numbers in the pregame show, and of course, Ryan Cox paced all banana ball players with 144 total trick plays, just 93 for Dustin Baber. But when we look at the 20 Bananas versus Party Animals games in Grayson Stadium in 2023, Dustin Baber had one more trick play than Ryan Cox, but tonight we've seen Coxie with two and Baber with one. They are tied atop the trick play leaderboard, and both of them, their single game highs here in Grayson Stadium, four trick plays. You never know. Something wacky could happen here at the end of this ball game, and we could see those guys tie or even break their own records here. Another look at that beauty from Cox, one of my favorite trick plays I've seen on the tour. As you get a look at, not a trick play here, but an excellent defensive play by Cox, saved a run. And here is Baber's lone trick play of the evening. Two for Cox, one for out and fly out. Sends this one deep out to center. Hampton tracks it down. Oh, that's a fantastic catch. Reese made it look far easier than it was. Not a trick play for Reese Hampton, but a phenomenal defensive play. Had to turn himself around and was still able to get ball in club there. Oh. Heck of a running snag from the party animal center fielder. So nice, you get to see it thrice. That is an unbelievable play. Keeps Rack out of scoring position. And now Alexiadis on a front door bender fouls it away. Reese pinch hit for Hosley in the fourth inning. Bounced out to the catcher. And now Helton, Acuff, Baber, and Hampton Boogieing into a foul ball behind the dish. Cornette throws away the mask. It will land on our heads here in the grandstands. He's only three for 15 in his awful young banana ball career. Talked about some of his accolades from the Pioneer League just a half inning ago. He will get hot, and when he does, it is going to be terrifying. Good banana ball feel there. He's already stolen first once, thought about it, but it was a great bounce back to Cornette, so he thought better of it. Yeah, we've seen, what I've noticed from Alexi Otis in these opportunities to steal first base, he's always looking at the ricochet. He's just looking at how the ball is traveling as it gets behind the catcher there. Good decision by him, as this is a high chop over the head of Brett Helton. Barehanded by Dustin Baber, but they are no match for Reese Alexiotis' speed on the diamond. He's going to reach with an infield single. He was 29 for 32 in his stolen base attempts last summer in the Pioneer League. This would be a great time to go. Jones Jr. one for two on the night with the walk-off single. Cranks it down the left field line. It's trouble. Alexiades is getting the wave around. No, Ortega's gonna throw up the hands. Good call. Double for Jones Jr. And Acuff, who's a terrific defender, was lined up for what if he nailed the throw, would have most likely nabbed Alexiades at the dish. Yeah, it's a good hold by Ray Ortega. Even though this game is knotted at zero runs here in this inning, you're gonna trust Jackson Olsen can come through as entering tonight, he's the Bananas tour leader in runs batted in with five. Tied for the tour lead with his two walk-offs as well. Lines it foul off the light pole. Struck well, just well ahead of it. Couple ground outs tonight for Jackie. From beneath. like the key to a great speech according to my grandpa Larry. Be brief and be seated. The banana nanas leave us yearning for more. Cameo from Joel there as he lets them back into their perch in the grandstand. Pico, nine trick plays tonight between the bananas and the party animals. Would you say that they have been tricky? Yes. I would. 
much like our good friends at Run DMC would say as well. Zach Phillips, the third man to tow the slab for the Nanners tonight. He comes in relief of Kyle Lewig. And he's got the top of the order. Hampton, Cornette, and Skull due to swing it. Reese. Back from the right side. Struck out swinging his last time in Ryan Kellogg's final inning, which was the fourth. But an RBI sprint. Sandwiched in between the K and a ground out. And this is already the fourth appearance of the season for Zach Phillips, who is trying to work quickly here. EJ goes under the legs. Phillips barehands the ball, but Reese sliding into first base will be called safe by Chris Walker, the first base umpire. Incredible speed from the Detroit Tigers and Arizona Diamondbacks, former minor leaguer, coming from the right-handed batter's box. We were hoping to get that one more look, but banana ball moves too quick for such a dream to come true. After just missing the outside corner, Phillips comes right after Dalton Cornette, get fouled away. DC three with a two run double, bashed off the top of the left field wall, missed a ding dong by just a foot. I wouldn't say more than that. As Reese scampers up to second on the wild pitch. Employs one of his patented celebrations. As who let the dogs out, blares through the stadium. Shout out the Baja men. Although, I implore everybody to check out the podcast. Hoops Among Us has let the dogs out. Cornette up the middle, Hampton coming home, throw from Meadows. Never had a chance. Beautiful slide from Hampton. <laughs> something extra on the end. A chest bump with Vincent Chapman. And two batters into the top of the seven. The animals have manufactured a run. Yeah, just 10 pitches into the inning and Zach Phillips has surrendered a run here to the party animals. Good job by Reese Hampton using his speed to get to first base safely and then advance on a wild pitch. And Dalton Cornette able to get ahead in the count. 3-1 there. Phillips had to throw him a strike and Cornette was ready for it. Got the RBI single for the Animals. It was Jake Skull, two for three with a single and a double. A run scored, stolen base as well. Filling up the stat sheet as per usual. The former Texas Rangers and New York Yankees minor leaguer. And that one, pass Ryan Cox, he is three for four. Cornette will tap the brakes and hold on at second. By the way, Dalton Cornette, two for four tonight. Three runs driven in, a double. He is 15 for 30 on the tour. Still hitting 500. Now Noah Fisher, well struck. Meadows back on it in front of the track. Leaps and is able to, now it's over his head. Oh, that had a little more oomph than it seemed like it would to both myself and Mr. Meadows. And it's gonna be a booming single for Fisher. Yeah, just a ball that was hit so deep that from our vantage point, really hard to tell if DR had come up with that one, but Hits behind him just a little bit, and now the bag's full for the party animals, and Zach Phillips still looking for that first out here in the seventh. Wow, Eric Jones Jr., full extension dive, gets the out at home, and now he's got Skull in a rundown. Leroy in pursuit, he'll flip to Phillips, Skull back towards the plate, Howell going after him. Jake trying to get some interference call. It's in Chapman not buying it. And that is one of the most bizarre double plays you'll see in your life. Well, it starts with an incredible defensive play from Eric Jones Jr. at first base. Not the first one of those types of plays we've seen this season from him either. A great one in Peoria. And Bill Leroy did not opt to go for the throw back to first base as no one was covering the bag. Saw Jake Skull just leading off a little bit, expecting Bill to go back to first base catches him in that rundown. That is such a smart play from Bill Leroy behind the dash. I'm gonna have to go back to the replay after the game to officially score it. It was something like, 
A three, two, five, two, one, two, double play. Something like that. We'll get there. Yeah. That's a big one. Now Chase Aka. 0 for 3, three flyouts. Fisher off second, Thomas off first. This one towards center. Meadows! Leaping catch! Unbelievable play! And the Nanners get out of the inning with just one run against them. Second web gem of the night from DR Meadows. And just when you think he's not going to be able to get to that ball, the speed is able to get him in position to lay out and make a phenomenal catch. What a wacky defensive inning backing Zach Phillips there. And both his web gems tonight robbing Chase Acuff of base knocks. Remember, this is still our Zappos three shoe giveaway innings. If you have not filled out all your information, do that right now. You have another half inning to do so. We're up in the booth for our first fan mail segment. Josh Tulevsky, Biko Scal, thank you so much for watching. This one comes from Cordelia. She says, Dear Savannah Bananas and Jesse Cole. Hi, my name is Cordelia. I am 12 years old. I've been watching your teams play games for a year or two now. I've been playing softball since I was three, and I love the game and everything about it. I know what Jesse and his wife do for foster kids with Bananas Foster, and it is amazing. I hope to be able to help children like that someday myself. You're a rock star, Cordelia. Cordelia could really use our help. She's a charity for first responders and is hoping we could give her a shout out so the mission can be shared. Yeah, we're doing that right now, Cordelia. She raises money for first responders by selling lemonade or other merchandise. The Facebook is Cordelia's Lemon Stand. That is Cordelia's Lemon Stand. She says, thank you for all the joy and smiles you bring. I love watching you play. I really hope I can make it to one of your games in person soon, especially because it would be a dream come true to meet Bill Leroy. Cordelia is a catcher just like him and has a pitcher that reminds her of Cowboy Kyle. And what the ding is going on here? Are the Bananas coaching staff, are they out of their minds? What the heck are you doing, Gillum? Pitch thrown behind Nana Gale. And now Malachi and company will escort her out of the batter's box. Connor Higgins fired a pitch behind her back. She is still shaken up about it. And Bill Leroy, Cordelia's favorite player, will start with a 1-0 count here in the bottom of the seventh. Same situation for the Nanners here as it was in the fifth. They're down a run and down a point in the ball game. If they can score one run, they will avoid going down two in the all-important points category. If they can play two runs, they will tie the game at two points apiece. Higgins a flamethrower. Misses the top of the zone by a smidge there. He's behind Leroy three and one, who has already worked a sprint this evening. And the 3-1, right down the chute. A single in Bill's most recent trip to the dish. Gets under this one. Hampton drifting into right center, takes a weird route, he's not gonna get there. The ball carrying and surprising both center fielders here in the seventh. It's a double for Bill. I mean, the ball has been doing some wacky things as it's reached the outfield in this contest. We saw Cornette's double just continue to carry out in left field. We saw DR Meadows perplex. And now Reese Hampton never able to get glove on that ball whatsoever. And it gets Bill in the scoring position. Bananas with a prime opportunity to tie this game at two points apiece. This is the third time through the order. So it's the third time Malachi Mitchell can pinch run. He does just that, takes Bill's place at second. The potential inning tying run. And Cox ahead 2-0. He's singled and been plunked tonight. One at the knees. And Higgins back in the count. Connor, former Los Angeles Angels minor leaguer. Sits usually about 92 to 95. Can touch 98-99. But it doesn't matter how fast you throw as... Mike Rizzo, the GM of the Washington Nationals, has been famous to say as of late, if you're throwing ball four, and there it is right now, Higgins loses Cox and gifts the Bananas a tied inning. Of course, 
He expected the Leroy double to be a can of corn. Acrobatics from Malachi. He then does step on home plate, so the Nanners answer. Cox with his third run driven in of the tour. He now represents the inning winning run at first. Yeah, and we had seen Connor Higgins, who of course walked more batters than he struck out last season, had not walked or had not allowed a sprint, I should say, to the first 11 batters he'd faced in 2024, but there to batter 12, Ryan Cox finally issues his first sprint. But trying to pound the zone once again is DR Meadows. Lofts this one to right field. Jake Skull again. The wind causing trouble. Skull can't come down with the catch, but is able to fire into second base and get that lead runner in Ryan Cox. What well, tarnation is happening? It is not an error because it goes in the books as a 9 6 fielder's choice. Skull's still able to get the lead runner. Meadows replaces Cox at first, which is a boon for the bananas. DR, he's got better wheels than Cox. Cox can run, but Meadows can fly. And now a wild pitch has the inning winning run in scoring position and Gabe Howell is gonna steal first base. First time he's done that in his young banana ball career. Yeah, and that was a huge ricochet behind home plate. Dalton Cornett had to run quite a good distance to go and retrieve that ball. Howell noticed and instinctively decided to collect his first steal of first this season. DR is still the only man who really matters on the bases for both sides. Now to the three hole, Dan Oberst ends this inning in dynamic fashion. Down the right field line, Meadows scores. The Bananas win the inning two to one. They've tied the game at two points apiece. Dan led the Bananas in hits to the opposite field last season and is not afraid to push that one down the right field line yet again as the Bananas dance it up in front of home plate as this game is all square through seven. Saddlebags meet historic Grayson Stadium. Seven frames in the books. Each team with two points. And we get another look at the shot off the bat of Big Dan Oberst. Let's get it down to the young professor for a blindfolded pillow fight. We've got Kevin, Marcus, Zach, and Samuel. We're going to blindfold them. We're going to spin them around, and they are going to fight blindfolded. You will pick who the winner is based on their tremendous skills. Gentlemen, let's go ahead and put our blindfolds on. And let's spin it out. Spin one, two, three, four, five. Fight! Here we go. Swing those pillows. The former Kansas City Royals minor leaguer gets his first K of the contest. And Jason Swan watches the heater come in low. Two for three on the night for the party animal's first baseman. That one chopped to second. Olsen to Cox to EJ. Four, six, three, double play, and a quick inning for Zach Phillips. Just what the Bananas and Zach Phillips needed right there. One minute and 34 seconds for the lefty. That's how you get this game to all nine innings tonight. All of a sudden, our pace is looking excellent. Jesse Cole leading the 293rd straight sold out Bananas crowd. 222nd straight here at Grayson Stadium. And it's been an awesome tradition. Started on last year's tour, turning the park yellow. Now even louder now. Time. 
Keep it going, Banana Nation. Keep it going. Here we go. Wow. Holy holy. Spin City. As we're yellow here in the hostess city of the South. First game back here in Grayson on the tour. Jesse Cole, how's that make you feel, my dear man? We love you so much, Banana Nation. Now let's go, Bananas! Sounds about right. Josh, were you going to tell me we've been doing yellow since the 2022 tour? Yes, I was. I saw it in your eyes. I was. <laughs> You know, you know what else we need to make note of? What's that, Brock? This game, of course, coming down to the wire, two points apiece through seven and a half as Drew Gillespie fires in his first pitch to Michael Deeb and will miss a 1-0 count. With this game coming down to the wire, it is only going to heighten the experience. We are going to have the closers for the bananas and the party animals mic'd up come the ninth inning. So it's gonna be really cool to see both guys on the mound trying to win the game with it on the line. That's an excellent point by you. I'm thrilled to have Drew Gillespie, the new man on the mound, or I'm guessing Danny Hosley for the bananas as Michael Deeb leads off the inning with a sprint. He's trying to get two bases. He's going to. Clutch sprint from Deeb, who has let off his fourth inning of the night. Here's Jesse. Tallest hitter. Fans, please welcome Dakota Stills Albrinen. Dakota Stills Albrinen coming up in the most pivotal spot here of the ball game. Michael Deeb has led off an inning in all four times he came to the dish tonight. He gets on base in three of them. Two hits in the sprint you just saw. And now Stiltz pops this one up, shallow left. And Tanner Thomas adds to the suspense, waiting until that thing just about touched the outfield grass and then grabs it. That's a big first out. You see Brandon Crosby has replaced Deeb on second. So the rookie in as a pinch runner here. He's not the automatic runner, so he takes Deeb's spot in the extra hitter pull in the lineup and will back clean up should the Nanners get back to that as Reese Alexiades who pinch it for Danny Hosley in the fourth it's his third trip to the plate he's one for two and we're still waiting for that first big hit from Reese Alexiades hitless with runners in scoring position so far on the tour but this could be the moment that turns the season around so far for Reese Alexiades who just smokes this one out of play down that right field line and clears Grayson Stadium. We've seen Reese notch a couple foul home runs. Still looking for his first between the poles. Crosby has excellent speed off of second. And a cut and a miss. Gillespie. It's Alexiades going for the tomahawk swing. Comes up empty on what I would wager is just about an unhittable pitch. And Drew now one out away from sending this game to the ninth. Tied at two points each. Eric Jones Jr. stands in his way. EJ's ahead 1-0. and out. This is what EJ does very well for the Bananas. Led the team in ball four sprints with runners in scoring position last year. Hit a respectable 275 batting average with runners in scoring position, but led the team with sprint, so a very disciplined hitter, and we've got him ahead in the count, 3-0 here. All he needs is one more bad one from Drew Gillespie, and the Bananas will go to the night with a lead in the points department. There it is, EJ fired up, waving in Brandon Crosby, and the Bananas have got the lead in this ball game. Here comes the young professor to give us the details on our final inning. Ladies and gentlemen, the sound of the bells means it's time to cast our gaze upon the scoreboard. With a walk up there in the eighth inning, it is now three points for the Savannah Bananas and two points for the party animals heading into the ninth inning. But here's the thing about the game of banana ball. In the final inning, 
every run counts for a point. That means this is the last opportunity for the party animals to mount their comeback. On the other hand, it's opening night and the Bananas need just three outs to lock down an opening day win. So ladies and gentlemen, make some noise and welcome to the final inning. As Josh mentioned an inning ago, we would have our closers on the mic tonight and we deliver on that promise. Danny Hosley, you are three outs away from securing a Bananas victory. What is your plan, my man? Attack, man, attack, attack, attack. One run lead. Play to your strengths, man. The boys did their job. Time to do mine. Hosley, what are the emotions for you holding down this closer role last year and into this year? I mean, how fired up do you get out there on the mound in these innings? Hey, it doesn't get better than this, Josh. These situations, I live for these. So we're going to see if we can find that breaking ball first, but this is stuff I live for right here, man. This is my favorite part of the game. Well, it's going to be a tough spot for you, Haas. It is 10 and then the top, and I would wager the party animals use their golden batter on Reese Hampton soon. In all likelihood, it's going to be Reese Hampton, Reese Hampton, Dalton Cornette. That'll be interesting. <laughs> That's the gauntlet. That'll be interesting. Oh, here it is. Of Dustin Baber. Please welcome Reese Hampton. Look at this man. <laughs> I am a big fan of the cape, though. That's a nice touch. You have a lot of experience with Reese. You've made some banana ball history, good and bad. Let's see if we can get him a, see if we get first pitch swing getting out here. What's the pitch? Peter, Peter away. Pull up. Make an adjustment, keep that shoulder in. There it is. Oh. Right power on power. Let's go back to the power. We're going to go in. We're late on this. No. Ah, don't do that. Don't over it. Let's slow it down a little bit here. Got him out in front. Cox. Nice play, baby. Nice play, baby. And a boy. That's what I'm talking about. That is a huge first out. Heck of a night for that kid, baby. No time going. for a trick play for Ryan Cox, but gets a big first out. Reese Hampton now one for four, batting as the golden batter. But this is the first time we've ever seen the golden batter bat in back-to-back -back ABs. It is Hampton who will get another go we'll here against Osley. We'll give a sec here. I know he's taking first pitch. He's gas. Let's see if we get this heater right over the plate. I love it. I was wondering if he would switch helmets. Ah. He'll stay with it. There it is. Steal that first one. Steal that first one. That's big. Go back with the slow stuff here. Good take. Oh. Good take. That was a great pitch. We'll go right back to it. He was auto take. Right back to it. Uh, I got it! 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 Ooh! <laughs> My bad, bro. He got him. Atta boy, man. I got you, bro. Come on now. I got you. I got you. I got you. Oh, lost our mic here. We still got you, Danny. Boys, I lost my earpiece. Don't know where it is. <laughs> we, uh, I'll talk you boys through this one here. Perfect. Sounds good. <laughs> Two down. Let's see if I do my job here. Yep. Peter away. I'll try to blow up the gun here. Yep. <laughs> Peter. There it is. Oh, Vincent. Vincent. What you guys got on that? I thought it was there. We don't have track, man. It looked pretty good. There it is. Make me a play. Oh, that's a triangle. Make me play, Rack. Rack City, baby. Woo! Thank you, boys. Thank you, thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Another baby. Another dub, baby. Woo! 
Let it hang, baby. Let Whoa. it hang. Woo. Good work, baby. Good work, baby. Uh, let it hang. Ah, let let it hang. Thank baby. you so much. Let it hang. <laughs> Danny Hosley. Up, baby? That was a treat. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> He talks us through. He's going to play, baby. He's going to play. Two good of the play. best hitters barrels, baby. in banana ball oh, history. Yeah. Sure, baby. Two Reese Hampton at bat. Oof. Ground out, yeah. pop out. Dalton Cornett, uh -oh. who is hitting 500 on the tour, coming into that at bat, gets him a fly out weekly to rack and left. It is unbelievable <laughs> pitching from Danny Hosley, doing it all while mic'd up. Just so cool to immerse ourselves in that experience, get to feel what it's like to be Danny Hosley taking the mound and facing some of the best bats in this party animals order. And look, not only was he able to get Reese Hampton, but Dalton Cornett led all party animals in batting average against Hosley with a 333 mark and is able to secure that final out. <laughs> Little delay here on our video compared to you. So you get an emphatic come on up to us from me after we're already up to us. Thanks for joining us in the broadcast booth. He's Josh Talevsky, I'm Biko Scala. We cannot thank you enough for spending your Friday night with us here in Banana Land. I tell you what, sign me up every single game for the rest of this year. Danny Hosley, whether they're winning, losing, tied, I want that guy mic'd up on the mound. I mean, just stayed so calm and composed, and that's what stands out is even after Ryan Cox makes a terrific first out and you feel Danny Hosley getting fired up, you hear him just saying, attaboy, attaboy. And after a collision with Gabe Howell right in front of the pitcher's mound, he just gets back on the mound, gets it together, and he's coming set. He is so dialed in, so focused. And I think that's why he's such a successful closer for this Bananas Ball Club. 100%. Calm cool collected he does not let any moment get too big for him i mentioned lightly that he has some bad history with reese hampton that is me not saying just right out in the open that reese hit the only ever home run out of the park in showdowns against danny hosley he takes it rolls right off his shoulder gets the guy twice in a row gets dalton cornett uh it, it's just a masterful performance and this was a huge win for the bananas who now are three and four on this tour, winners of two straight, three out of their last four, and each of these three wins has been by just one point. Two DR Meadows walk-offs, and uh, check that, one DR Meadows walk-off, two Danny Hosley saves. I mean, it, they are winning tight ball games here. Yeah, I mean, the Bananas are kind of turning into this comeback team right now. I mean, especially game one being down two points and then rallying for three to win that ball game. We saw a back and forth affair with the party animals in game three in Peoria. And here they surrender the lead to the party animals in the middle innings, come back late and are able to secure the victory once again. So this might be the squad that we're going to continue to get to see as a team that doesn't always start off the hottest offensively, but in innings seven through nine, this team is incredibly tough to beat. They have really attacked the party animals bullpen for the most part so far early on in the tour. And how about the night for Michael Vitamin Deeb? In the cleanup spot, all four plate appearances, he is leading off an inning, Go, ends up two for three with a sprint. He scores a run, and Brandon Crosby scores a run after pinch running for him. Malachi Mitchell scores a run after pinch running for him. So all three times he gets aboard, either he scores or the runner in his stead scores. Uh, what a big night for the Nanners extra hitter. Yeah, and what's great is that the Bananas love having a guy that they can throw in the middle of that order, batting cleanup, who's also a left-handed bat. You yeah. start with D.R. Meadows, Gabe Howell, and Dan Oberst, all right-handed batters, and then you're able to switch it up with Michael Deeb, too. And, well, the top three guys in this Bananas order were able to kind of battle throughout the night and allow some mistakes to be thrown to Michael Deeb, which he capitalized on. And, of course, we have seen it time and time again. Uh, going back to last year's 2023 tour, game one in Tampa, Florida, between the Bananas and the Party Animals, Michael Deeb working a critical ball four sprint late in the game that tied that ball game. And here, he worked the ball four sprint to lead off the inning and used his hustle to get into scoring position there. And it paid dividends as the ban Bananas were able to come away with the victory. And then it was the ball four sprint by Eric Jones Jr. that puts the Bananas ahead. The first time they were ahead, it was the walk-off single from EJ in the first inning. He also goes two for three. He adds two walk-offs. He paces this very young tour with three of them overall. Bill Leroy in the nine hole goes two for 
two with the ball for a sprint, scores uh, one run, and also Malachi scores a run twice for him in his stead. So all three times Bill came up to the dish, his spot in the order produced a run. I mean, that is a, a clinic from the middle and bottom of the order for the Bananas, which is really key in sneaking past this incredibly talented Party Animal squad. Yeah, I mean, offensively speaking, there were a lot of cool things that we saw tonight, but the trick play race is still as hot as it's ever been. Ryan Cox, two trick plays tonight. Dustin Baber, only one, but through seven games now, we see that Ryan Cox and Dustin Baber are tied atop of this trick play leaderboard. And boy, it is going to be exciting to see who closes out this first home series in Savannah on top in trick plays. And do not sleep on Chase Acuff. Three of them tonight. He now has 12 on the tour. So he's just three behind the lead. Okay, we have to wrap this thing up. And we will be giving out a free pair of shoes before we shout out this cast and crew. Drum roll for uh, Zappos. Oh, almost said. Oh, almost said. shoes. Yeah, I almost said. Shoes. Yeah, shoes, everybody. <laughs> Zappos. Kevin Sheehan. Kevin Sheehan. Congratulations. On your free pair of shoes, we'll be giving away a pair every single broadcast this year. Thank you so much to everybody for watching this evening. For the cast and crew that made it possible, on the first base camera, the Iron Horse of BTV, Emerson Elmgren. Who else? On third base across the diamond, Lex Fowler. Lex, absolute superstar here on a really torrid rookie campaign. On high home, below us, Sophia Peach. Excellent work on high home, Sophia. On the center field cam, you know him, you love him. The man's been here longer than I have. Ben Barks on the wireless cam. Clayton Franklin, Clay Pimp, all over the place. That dude is on fire as well. On the high first, Jeff Glover. Excellent work, Jeff. On the utility, DJ Squints himself, Nick Keldy, miking up all kinds of guys, getting Hosley in the ninth. Baber and Cox during multiple innings, helping out our Party Animals correspondent, Drake Toll, all over this place. That guy is unbelievable. When it comes to the folks in the control room, our director, Kylie Sadamka. Are you kidding me? That's a superstar. Technical director, Griffin Ellis, another man who has been here longer than I, and we would not be here if not for Griff Dog. On the replay, Kwanzi, one name, you know him, you love him. That guy rocks. On the audio, Brian Bailey, hammering the ones and the twos. Good stuff, Brian. On the score bug, it is Michael Basista. He is always dominant there. On the graphics, Julia Massey. On the statistics, on said graphics, that were being updated throughout the night. Mikey O'Connor, that is a two-headed monster that I would take over any two graphics folks in the entire world. Thank you so much to our chat moderators, Colbyte underscore and Scott Thompson. And thank you very much to the aforementioned Drake Toll, Ryan Cox, Dustin Baber, and Danny Hosley, as well as the DeClue family and the fans that Drake continues to wrangle around this park. Josh Tolevsky, excellent work on the color commentary. Biko, again, so good to be back here in Grayson Stadium. Yeah, Just the kind of game that fires you up two hours on the dot, and you killed it on the play-by-play -play tonight. Now that is what I like out of my statistical savant. Chad Reese, our coordinating producer, always pulling all the strings, and he's the best in the biz. Thank you to our executive producers of BTV, Carrie, Emily, and Jesse Cole, as well as Jared Orton. I am Biko Scala saying so long from our entire crew. The bad news, this is where the broadcast ends. The good news, we'll be back tomorrow, same place, same time, right here on the tube. If we do not see you in between now and then. We'll see you